Hey listeners, I am so happy you are here with me today. I have a very special guest and we are going to do some myth busting while talking about a nomadic life and just the joy that can be experienced when you are an entrepreneur and you create the business and life of your dreams. And there are so many things that we see online about passive income. And the reality is that is anything really and truly passive. So we are going to bust that myth and talk about exponential income instead. Samantha Harris, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Thanks for having me, Robin. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I can't wait to have this conversation. We talked about creating a membership site way back, I think in episode 115 with Jennifer DePazzo. And I will put the link to that show in the show notes, but we didn't dive into exactly what we're going to talk about today in regards to memberships. And this is something near and dear to my heart right now, because as soon as my book publishes, I want to create a membership. So I'm excited to learn all of this nitty gritty from you, but also see how you are changing the lives of entrepreneurs from having to work so much, so hard, and you're changing their lives by helping them create memberships so that they have exponential income and are living a more free lifestyle. So mm -hmm. would you please tell the listeners a little bit about you? Absolutely. Okay. First thing I have to do is disclaim. I am not a burly mountain man. I am just sitting here with a cold. So I apologize <laughs> about my voice. <laughs> Hopefully you're not picturing a, a big lumberjack with a beard here. I promise I am a girl and you can find me over on Instagram and I have proof. <laughs> You're so funny. Um, so I started boxers earlier this morning with my clients and I was like, okay guys, I'm warming up my voice. How do I sound? And they're like, uh, sexy. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's great. Love it. I'm so excited to be here, Robin. And as you heard, I'm Samantha and she mentioned a nomadic lifestyle. So my husband and I have been together for, we're going on, this is our 16th year together. We're going on 12 years of marriage this year and we don't have any kids. So we've always talked about going on the road and what it would look like to live on the road. But my husband was wrapped up in this sales job that unfortunately he was really good at, and he was never going to leave <laughs> because he just really loved his job. And I had created this online business a few years back this next month, I guess in two weeks, we're going to celebrate our fifth anniversary in business. So really excited about that because if you guys don't know this, I think the statistic is that 90% of businesses fail by five yeah. years in. And yeah. I'm like, Hey, we made it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So you made it and you've made it well, like you didn't just made it. You're experiencing an incredible life. We are. And I'm so excited to tell you that first of all, it's not without a thousand pivots. Like the business we have today is not the business we started with. So know that it's okay to change things up. You really have to survive. It's not always going to be sustainable to start with the same thing. And I say the same about memberships. I tell my clients, the membership you start with on launch day is not going to be the same membership you have at year one. And that is okay. We've seen quite a few changes in our business, especially in the last two years. But something that happened in 2018 was that I was in the same space as a lot of my clients are in now. I was burnt the heck out. I was sitting in front of my computer eight to 10 hours a day, seeing clients back to back because I love working with people one-on-one. -on -one. I love pouring into them, being a part of their journey. And I did a lot of consulting business mentorship and social media strategy one-on-one -on -one with people. That was the core of my business. And my clients wanted some extra support after they worked with me. And so I had this idea where maybe we could get together once a month and take pictures with each other. And then once a week I could go on and talk about like extensive strategy and things that are new on Instagram, because as we know, everything is always changing. That is the one thing that hasn't changed about Instagram is that everything's always changing. So I thought, oh, offer this to my clients because the only people they have around to take their pictures. And back then Instagram was still a picture taking app. They had to have pictures in order to put content up. And so the only people around to take their pictures were their grumpy husbands on date night or their three-year-old who was three feet tall or less. And that's just not the best angle. So I 
wanted to create this space where kind of girlfriends could get together, take pictures together, create content and learn about how to support that content. So I offered it to some clients and friends and my friends who were not my clients were like, wait a minute, I don't want to be left out. I want in on that. And so late 2018, my membership was born on accident. I had, again, intended it just to be for my clients, but everyone wanted to come and hang out and come to these cool meetups. We ended up launching in nine locations in the first year and growing to 150 members. So it was quite a fun little jaunt there before COVID hit. And then everything got switched up a little bit. We went fully online and we're in the process of switching things up, of course, but that's how our membership was born. And for a lot of people, I think it's, it's the same kind of story where you had been in this situation, the way out, now you're ready to teach how to get out of it. And once the membership was born, that really changed things for me. It created this new time freedom that I didn't know was possible. I didn't have to rely on -on one-on-one income anymore. And it freed my days up quite a bit. And I started dreaming about four years ago about going on the road and living on the road with my husband and traveling around. And really we wanted to travel around and create new chapters of our membership. And so it was like totally a win-win because anytime we can blame our fun stuff on our business, why not? Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. That's smart thinking, right? Yeah. Yeah. So not only is it a write-off, but I can justify this because it's for business. Because back then it was still really taboo to be nomadic, like really taboo. Now you've got the van lifers and it's a little bit more accepted, I think, post COVID now. But back then it was like, oh my gosh, why would you do that? You dirty hippie. It was weird, but now it's intriguing to a lot of people. So we opened the membership. We started shopping for RVs about four years ago. And we just never pulled the trigger. And then COVID happened and some things changed in my husband's job. And this last summer I said to him, what if we left? What if we gave up our apartment and we just left and we bought an RV? So we ended up buying a motorhome outright instead of financing one, which was an amazing decision. And now we tow our Jeep behind it and we're headed off on, we're we're at our first location now. We're heading off to our second like six month adventure in a week and a half. And I am so excited about it. So things can change because of membership. You don't have to just sit there in your burnout and be miserable because we created our businesses for a reason. We didn't want to, yeah, for time freedom. And then we end up creating jobs for ourselves. And that's exactly what I did because I love this idea of stability. So I was even like, I had billing dates for my clients, the first and the 15th. I was getting a paycheck. It was just coming from me. And so (laughs) I was like, Hey, wait a minute, let's switch things up. Let's change our bottom line from coming from one-on-one coaching to membership. And then it's this constant stream of exponential income where I don't have to do more work. The more people I bring in, I actually just get more money for it. So Let's talk about that. Yeah, I can't wait. So let's dispel this myth of passive income, because this is something that is key to your overall messaging. So tell us a little bit about those thoughts, and then we'll dive into what steps we need to take to effectively create a membership. So what do you think of when you think of passive income? What I think of is making money while I sleep. And a lot of people will think of like real estate or they will think of some kind of like Amazon business or something that might be even a little bit sleazy. The term passive income can go along with that like bro marketing where you've got those guys with their nice hair and their nice watches leaning down in front of a car that doesn't belong to them that costs over a hundred thousand dollars kind of what some people think of when they think of passive income and i like to say if passive income told the truth it would call itself exponential income because it doesn't come without work unless like robin and i were just talking about unless you've inherited something which not all of us are so lucky (laughs) But working smarter and not harder is really where it's at. It's 2022. We're stepping it up. We do not have to work the way that our parents and our grandparents worked. We have this technology. We should harness it. We should use it. But I'm really big into creating exponential income that breeds authenticity, community, and support for the people that are involved in it. If you want to start a membership just to make money or just to make quote unquote passive income, 
it's not going to be the right thing for you because there is a lot of labor of love that goes into building it. What I like to say is there's this kind of pendulum or like bar graph where in the beginning, your work and the time that you're putting into it is way high while your income is little to nothing, right? But as you grow and build, they shift completely where your income is up here and your work and your time that you're putting in either goes lower or doesn't change. The nice thing about a membership is once you have members that are completely bought in and just love you and love what you're offering, they do a lot of the growing of the membership for you. I would say that you can usually expect that by the three to six month mark. And then as you grow, you're not putting in more work. It doesn't cost you any more time to pour into your membership the more it grows. It might cost a little bit of extra time on the back end, but a lot of us are going to have community managers that do that. But really, it's very minimal. What you'll see is exponential growth on the income side because you work the same amount of time in front of the camera or in front of your people and just more people are able to view it, therefore more income. So that's what we see exponential income as. And it's something that I think everyone should really take a hard look at. I love this so much. So tell me this, is there a platform that you recommend for starting a membership? I have recently learned, and I am not well-versed in all of the platforms for online courses and memberships and things like that, but I know there's Member Vault, Thinkific, Teachable. Mm-hmm. What do you recommend and <clears throat> why? So really good question. And I would say that I do have some bias here because I've been in the trenches with most of these things. I'll tell you my personal story and what didn't work about it and why we switched to another platform. So back when we started in 2018, there really was not a lot of membership platforms. Then probably around 2020, I'll say a lot of people, a lot of tech companies launched membership platforms because they saw the growing need for it. And everyone wanted a piece of the pie, but I'll tell you just because it's an option with a company doesn't mean it's the best option. So just because we'll say Kajabi offers membership doesn't mean Kajabi is the best place for membership. And it really does depend on what the core of your membership is about. If you're, so I will say this, all good memberships contain these three things, community, accountability, and support. And if you don't have all three of those things, the likelihood of success is low, but every membership doesn't have an equal amount of those things. Most, I'm sorry, not support. Education is the third one. Community, accountability, and education. Okay. If your membership is education heavy, then Kajabi might be the best place for you. But if your community is fairly even or more community heavy and support heavy, you might need a place that cultivates community a lot more and connection a lot more, makes it easy for people to actually interact with each other. I would say on Kajabi, no one interacts with each other at all. No one. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So Kajabi was the gold star in in the industry for a long time. and, And they might still be considered that as far as entrepreneur magazines and stuff go. However, we started there in Kajabi. Kajabi is pricey, I'll say that, but I wanted to go all in with the best. If I was gonna do this, I was gonna do it. And just a few memberships a month cover the cost of it. At the time, it wasn't about the price, it was about the the oomph behind it. Mm -hmm. And so we, we started with Kajabi and we did have to have a Facebook group to go along with it because where were we going to host the lives? Where were we going to have the interaction? Our membership was literally called content and connection. Kajabi could only host content. There was no connection happening there. And so we needed that support to happen. So we went with Facebook because it was our only option. Now I would highly recommend almost no one going with Facebook ever for a few different reasons. Number one being that you don't own that platform. Number two, it is not just you there. They have a lot of distractions on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes that can work in your favor in the way that like they're already on Facebook and then they see what's going on in the membership. But what I'll tell you is that doesn't breed prioritization and you really want your members to be all in. You want them to prioritize your membership just as if they were going to prioritize like an in-person networking event. They put it on their calendar, they get dressed, they show up, they get a sitter, whatever it is. And so prioritization is a huge trigger to know if your membership is going to work or not. And Facebook just doesn't cultivate good prioritization. Kajabi and Facebook are what we 
don't really recommend much at all anymore. Nowadays, we're recommending things like Mighty Networks and Circle. These apps, and I say apps because they are actually dedicated phone apps on your phone, which is extremely helpful because they both have push notifications. So you can send private notifications that you're in control of as the owner of the membership that will actually get delivered to them versus on Facebook, you're in a sea of other notifications. So I love that it has the in-app notifications. There's tons of in-app features that are very similar to the types of things you'd get in a Facebook group, like the units slash topics area, the live video, the DMs, like there are so many great features in both of these and they're actually at a lower price point than Kajabi. So it houses everything. There are a few other things that I don't love and I'll talk about those two just briefly. I don't love website plugins. Part of it is because again, it's not an app on their phone, which is probably where they're going to do the majority of the connecting part. Not necessarily education part, but the connecting part. And it's just not somewhere that they'll easily be able to hang out. It's not Mm -hmm. somewhere that can send notifications. I will tell you the notification part is super vital because we've got so many things going on, right? In our lives. And if people don't get reminded about stuff, they probably aren't going to show up. So Mm -hmm. there is a lot of, there's a lot to be said about an app that offers in-app notifications and push notifications. Well, this is excellent. These are things that I would not have thought about. So these platforms are totally different and they're totally new to me. I've never even heard of them, but are they similar to those platforms like Thinkific and Teachable or are those and Member Vault or are those more for online courses and these are more for building a true community and membership? So Thinkific and Teachable are both like Kajabi, all course options that decided to make a membership section. Because I will say, if you have a course, it is a natural, awesome, really great tool to go into a membership afterwards. Anyone who has a course to really take a hard look at adding in a supportive membership for your students who graduate your course. So if you're in that boat, it might be pertinent for you to stay there. But if you're not already there with your course and your membership isn't specific to the graduation of your course, then I wouldn't go there just because they're not necessarily made for membership. And a lot of them, it's just hard to interact there. Mm -hmm. This makes so much sense. Okay. Now let me ask you this. What about pricing? How does one Mm -hmm. evaluate and determine pricing? So I'm talking about amounts and then how do you offer pricing in terms of a monthly payment versus an annual payment? And then are there discounts associated with the annual payment? Okay. All great questions. First of all, I highly discourage most of my students to stay away from an annual payment for reasons that I'll discuss. (laughs) So I've only seen one person ever have to close their membership. And this one person sold mostly annual memberships. And she told me what a nightmare it was to have to either refund these people, because obviously she's already spent the money, or have to go and give them value ads because she closed her membership. Now, it's not super common that people are going to close their membership, but you might start and hate it with every ounce of your being. And if you're showing up just because people paid a a full year and you feel like you have to show up, no one's getting their best. You're not able to give your best. They're not getting your best. So it's just not a good idea. But what I'll say about annual memberships is because it's not a recurring charge, sometimes people won't continue and or won't participate because they forget them. So There is a perk to having an annual membership in the state of California. I'm not the expert on this, but there was just a new law dropped in California for subscriptions. It was actually focused on businesses like Netflix and Amazon, who can be known to take advantage of people because they're big businesses, but it really doesn't hurt them. It only hurts people who are selling intellectual property like we are. And so we have to be really careful about our protecting our energy and protecting our intellectual property because those things are not a dime a dozen like Netflix movies they are proprietary and they're (laughs) things that we that it's all we have a lot of us all we have is our brain and our voice and if someone steals our intellectual property it, it can be really hard to prove but also really hard to fight for so you have to be careful with that stuff but when you have a recurring card on file in California now you have to agree 
for California residents to relinquish their membership at any time. There's no 30 day minimum, 90 day minimum, which I do, I do recommend those things for, to save your intellectual property and you have to do a refund if it's requested. And so all of that is really scary for people in California, but there are some ways which I do teach my students. There are some ways that you can combat that, but having a a year long membership would be part of it where it's actually more of a contract like Uh through Dimsado or HoneyBook rather than in a recurring membership. But the problem with that is, again, people may drop off. They may not use it because they're not seeing that monthly charge. So it's a psychological thing. Same thing with someone who does like a quarterly membership. We have had a few girls that are like in the fashion industry where it makes sense to do a quarterly membership because fashion is seasonal. A lot of people will say, oh, just wear yoga pants all winter. I don't need winter fashion. So I'll come back in the spring or whatever. And that's just not the energy we want. We want an energetic match. You want to attract people who are going to put in the same effort and energy as you are. So that brings us to price too. This is a very, what should I say? Personal conversation because it really, there's a lot of factors and it's not the same answer for everyone. But what I will say is it's a lot easier for someone to say yes to something that's $49 or less than it is $51 or more. And that's just a psychological thing. Not that your membership is only worth $49. I I have a backend membership that's worth like $700 a month. I charge $300 a month for it, but it's valued at $700. There there is a wide scale of pricing through membership. It just really depends on what they're getting from you. And you would base it mostly on how much access they have to you. So if they never have any access to do anything more than ask you questions in a public forum, then you probably are going to go on the lower price point. But if they have any access to you in the DMs, if they have any access to you on Voxer, it's going to be quite a bit more because then you're getting closer to one-on-one pricing. I also believe in a pricing scale. So you start at what we call like a founder's rate. And there is a whole like launch schedule that goes along with that and milestones that you want to hit. But founder's rate is for lack of a better explanation, until you reach a hundred people. And then once you reach a hundred, it goes up. Now, again, that can change too, based on if your membership has a cap or not. So I have one membership that does have a cap and one that doesn't. And in my membership that doesn't, I want there to be 25,000 people in that membership someday. But in my membership that does have a cap, like the cap is literally 30. So the price difference is going to be very different between those two as well. Uh So Rule of thumb is anything less than $50 is going to be easier to say yes to, and it's not going to hurt them very badly if it's a recurring monthly subscription, but you really need to pay attention to your energy and you don't ever want to resent your membership. The worst thing you could ever do is give too much and feel bad about it. Feel like yucky about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you just mentioned that my next question basically. And that is how often do you show up? So Mm. what are typical expectations? Like I would probably think that I would be showing up live at least once a month and then offering other days that I wasn't showing up live. So what, is there a baseline starting point for what you're offering, what you're including in the membership? So the standard used to be once a week. However, Because of COVID and the time, people have really taken a hard look at their time and where they spend it. A lot of them are spending a lot more time on TikTok. (laughs) But like myself included, I'll spend two hours a day on TikTok and I don't want to commit to anything else because I'm disassociating from the world. But people have evaluated their time, whether it's for good or bad, and they prioritize different things, right? So going back to you want to make your membership a priority in your members' lives, once a week might be too much. So if you only show up live once a month and then everything else is dripped out from there, they're going to prioritize that once a month. But Mm -hmm. if you're showing up live three times a week, you're probably going to get three people on each call. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot of extra time and effort. You have to get up and get dressed and put makeup on every three times a week. Then, (laughs) And now it is, that is a a big job. (laughs) That's a big job. Okay. So then that leads me to when you said, 25,000 people on the call. Mm -hmm. What platform would you use to be able to have a call like that? 
Now, like Zoom isn't going to hold that many. Zoom people. is not capable of that. And we're, I will say, we're pretty far away from 20, 25,000. But in that situation, you would probably just do a live broadcast into your group, which all of the platforms are capable of. And even Facebook, you can broadcast live into your group. At that point, the group is way too large to have that many people connecting with each other on a call anyway. Mm -hmm. So it would probably be the live broadcast would probably be more webinar style. And then you just take questions from the audience as you would on any webinar, but you would probably just do a live broadcast into your group, host it there. It's private. It's nice and comfy for everybody. And you're the only one who would have to show up with makeup. They wouldn't. (laughs) <laughs> yep, that's right. So you would use some, you could broadcast live through Zoom, StreamYard. Now I'm learning just because of a couple of podcasts I've been on, there's even more that there people are. are using now. So you would just find the one that has what you are looking for, the best price, all of that. So a lot of these membership platforms, both Mighty Networks and Circle, have their own live streaming inside the group. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So so, these really are just all in one platforms. I, I hesitate with calling them all in one because I do want to mention, I don't love having your payment taken inside of the platform. And the reason for that, I want to own, I want you to own the place where you take the payments just in case the platform ever goes down or you want to switch to another platform or anything like that. You have your payments separately. I don't always love the sales pages and the capabilities, the discount options, stuff like that inside of the platforms. So I like to just take payments through Stripe because I own my Stripe account. There's Mm -hmm. no additional fees. There's the hefty Stripe fee, but most of these platforms will charge an additional like 1% on Mm -hmm. top of it to process the payment. Yeah, I like to keep my payments separate, have my own sales page. That way I'm in control of it. And then just shift them into the platform. But for all intents and purposes of features, yes, they are completely like, I would call them all inclusive is what I would call them. They've got literally everything you need from notifications to organization. They've even got subgroups inside where for us, because we're, we have location-based stuff, like we have meetups in different cities, we have chapters inside of our group. And that's not even something you can do in Facebook. Mm -hmm. So wow, that's excellent. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this has been a wealth of information, Samantha. I really appreciate you sharing all of this with us. Do you have any last minute tips that you want to share before we close out? Goodness. Okay. So not to be daunting, but I will say the building of your membership is the easiest. The Real work happens when you start working and when you start presenting and when you start really growing your membership. And so I am the kind of coach who really loves to be with people every step of the way. We talked earlier about how Robin and I are both Enneagram twos. And so I tell my students, I want to be there. You're not bugging me. I literally am your business partner without you having to split your shares with me. Like I love to be there every step of the way. And so I love working with people who really love to lean into that. And those are like my total ideal clients, but I would highly recommend seeking support because doing this alone can be really lonely. And Mm -hmm. I will say, if you don't feel like you're on an emotional roller coaster almost every day, then you probably are not in business. (laughs) at least not for real. I would absolutely say lean into that support. If it's available to you, I'm happy to be there for you, but the support that you offer your people is just as valuable when you go and seek support for yourself. You can't pour from an empty cup, right? Yeah, I agree 100%. And we're not meant to do this journey alone. We need someone alongside of us to just navigate the decisions and the And the grind and the grit and have somebody to say, Hey, you need to step back and take a rest today or whatever. Um, Okay. This is awesome. So do you have a book that you would recommend to the listeners? A book? Oh my goodness. I wasn't prepared for this one. What am I reading? Okay. I'm reading Atomic Habits. Okay. That's great. I would say everybody needs to read that one this year. Yeah, it's good. And I love, love, love how James Clare talks about values. And to me, that's so important to adhere to your, our values, right? In order to be successful. And you are adhering to your values, just staying true to the lifestyle you want, which I love. Also, 
I want to mention too, I've read Annie F. Downs 100 Days to Brave like a thousand times, literally restart it every January. So it's more of a devotional Uh because it's every single day there's a tiny excerpt for a hundred days. If you haven't either listened to or read that one, I highly recommend that one too. Oh, I'll add both of these to the show notes and I haven't read that one, but I'm going to check that out because I love devotionals. That's how I start every single day. So that is so good to know. Okay. Listeners. If you enjoyed this episode and found value here, will you please subscribe to the show so you don't miss any further episodes and leave us a rating and review because that is how other people find us. And if you know someone who is an entrepreneur and is looking to potentially start a membership, share this episode with them because this could save them a ton of time in research and trying to navigate this by themselves. Samantha, will you please tell the listeners where they can find you connect with you and learn more from you. Of course. So I mostly hang out on Instagram. Uh, my handle is at Samantha Harris.co and I'm there all day, every day. So please slide into to my DMS. Let me know you've listened to the episode. I would love to hear from you. You'll also find a little freebie there in my bio to get you started on your membership. If that's something that you are looking into this year, that's called the membership prep worksheet. So that'll be right there in my bio. And if you have any questions while you're working through that, I am there for you in the DMs as well. Other than that, I am on Pinterest, but my most active space is Instagram. Follow her guys, because you can follow along with her journey as she travels across the country. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Samantha and listeners. Thank you for being here and I will catch you next time. Thanks for having me, Robin. Bye.